Okay, so looking at what they're trying, me, trying to do, they want me to align these edges. All right, so align these edges with the diagram, and then it looks like it wants me to center the part over here. So let's just take a peek at what this is gonna look like. So I'm going to align these edges. Yep, there we go, and then center the part. And then it's not quite centered. So I'm gonna flip this over real quick, or actually flip it on the side, and see what we're bumping into. It's almost centered, because I don't want it to touch anything, right? Like I don't, so it looks like on the top, it's bumping into the, the top sort of bar in this bar here. I'm gonna take a peek on the other side and see if it's a better fit on the other side real quick. Let's flip this over before I start modifying the, the part that I just made. I just wanna see if, you know, by chance. If you look at this, th these bars, they're a little flexible and they've, you know, they're, they're maybe not perfectly straight right now. <laughs> They will be once we put some of those big bolts in place. So, oh, that's much better. It still feels like it's touching on this side, which is the same side that it was touching over there. So I might shorten this up just a smidge because you don't want it touching, because if it's touching, it'll vibrate and it'll rub and it won't be great. So let's figure out what we're gonna do to reduce this. Pretty good measurement there. So it is two and a half or five sixteenths. Yeah, it's right in the middle. So that's good. So I think let's take a peek at some of these edge distances real quick. Yeah, there's tons of edge distance. So I am going to. I'm going to shave just a smidge off of here. I just roughly marked what I'm going to do. I'm not going to take that much off. Um, I don't want to take that much off, but I'm just going to shave that down just a smidge to make this fit. Got about a a 30 second gap there, which I think is great. So, what do they want us to do with this? My guess is they want me to clamp it and then drill these holes. So let's take a peek. So, all right, mark a center line. Okay, that's done. Um, if I had done both of them at this point, I would cross this off with a pencil. I cross a step off as I do them, but I haven't. I've only done one side. Uh, so, okay, so clamp the stiffener angle on center section as shown, align the edge of the angle with the outboard edge of the bulkhead as shown in figure three. Yep, center the center line on center hole common to both the bulkhead and the stiffener angle. Yep, clamp everything together. Match drill and Clico the holes common to both the stiffener angle and the center section bulkhead using the center section bulkhead as the drill guide. And we're going to beat for the remaining stiffener angle. So it's exactly what I expected. So they had me create a positioning line and then they told me how to mark it on there, and then I'm going to use that as a way to drill through here. So let's grab a couple of clamps. These clamps are maybe a bit too big for this, but that's what we've got handy right now. I'm gonna, whoops, I'm gonna roughly position this just so that the clamps don't fall off. So remember, they said have this side flush, that looks pretty flush and then center the line on the hole and I can't quite see the hole here I'm trying not to get my 
big head in the way of the camera. There we go. That looks about right. So, I'm, oops. I'm gonna tighten this down. And make sure it's nice and flush. Yep, nice and flush. So that looks reasonably tight. So, same deal here. Nice and tight, nice and flush. I just wanna loosen this bottom one just to make sure that I'm actually flush and not pulling it out. I felt like I maybe pulled it out a smidge. Okay, there we go. Nice and tight, nice and tight. Double check the hole again. Yep, that's centered, that's flush. All right, so let me get a number 30 drill bit. Number 30 drill bit, truck it in the drill, battery is good, so it's going to spin nice and quick. And this is a fairly critical part, so I'm going to be really careful with it, and I'm going to lubricate the drill bit with the little tube of bow lube. And I do, I am doing this by hand, I'm not doing it in the drill press, mostly because there's no way I'm going to be able to fit this in the drill press and not make a mess of it. Um, and I can look at it from up here, which actually gives me a different viewpoint, and I can see that I'm not perfectly centered. Look at that. So, oops, sorry. I'm going to move it out just a smidge. Again, this doesn't have to be this critical. I'm just sort of weird about some of these things. It's like whenever I'm doing something with the wing spars, I'm very particular about making sure holes are centered, making sure edge distance is good. You know, this is the part of the airplane where you don't want to mess it up. <laughs> All right, so here we go. So I'm going to keep this as straight as I can, right? I'm looking at the shadow of the drill bit before I start. That looks pretty good. And there he is watching me and making sure that that drill is... Make sure your finger isn't on the other side of that. I hear that really hurts. And, all right, so the idea here is we're using the, the spar as a drill guide for the piece. So every time you drill through, you're gonna put a cleco in to make sure it doesn't smush itself over when you're drilling the other side. So again, same thing, making sure I'm nice and straight. So a quick point on drill bits and when um, when it's drilling well, you'll notice that I get these little slivers. Um, when you're getting slivers like this, the drill bit is really working well because it's being able to create a you know a complete I guess you know cut in the piece. Sometimes you'll notice that you're not making a lot of progress and it's just creating chips. Chips are fine. The slivers are when you know it's really drilling well and the drill bit is sharp and, and things are going well. Um, if you're getting a lot of chips or you're not getting much of anything, um, consider trying a different drill bit. Consider lubricating the drill bit or possibly changing the amount of pressure or speed that you're using. I did two holes, so I'm just gonna relube that. Everything still feels good here. And here we go. Oftentimes you can feel when you're about to break through the other side of the piece because the I don't know, the feedback you're getting from the drill feels different. Like you, you'll get a feel for this as you start working on, on your build. Um, you'll, kn you'll know when it's gonna happen. <laughs> All right, so, get the, those 
out, one more Clico, and now we can do the last two holes because we've got Clico's holding everything in place. Feels pretty good, still nice. Yep, looks great. I'm pushing up with my thumb here to make sure, my thumb, my index finger, to make sure that the piece I'm drilling into is nice and tight against the other part. And I am being careful not to have my finger where the drill is gonna come through on the other side. I don't think I've drilled my finger yet, but I have drilled other people's fingers. <laughs> um, after telling them to be careful not to put their finger there. Um, You don't want to let this walk, right? You don't want to oval the spar in any way here. Yep, you, I felt it the minute it was gonna go in. So the holes look all good. They're not, I haven't ovaled anything. Um, these look nice. So let's take these Clicos out. And we're gonna do burr all of this. Um, it's nice to look that the hole was almost perfectly centered. And it's interesting that it's also almost perfectly centered top to bottom on that piece. It's almost like they planned it that way, right? So, so here we go, just the spinny deburry thing. Two turns, you don't want to countersink the hole, you just want to take the, the burrs off of the end. Nice and smooth. The other side's got the bigger burrs because that's where the drill came out. So this might take more than, than two, you can see the big burrs on there. So this one might take more than two turns. Nope, two looks like it did it. And I countersunk that one just a tiny little bit. It's not the end of the world. Just try not to do it. <sighs> okay, that looks good. And we're going to do the same thing very, very carefully on the spar here. You just want to get the burr. You can feel that there's a slight little burr, and you can probably even tell in the reflection. So I'm just going to take one turn here. Maybe two turns. There we go. Nice and clean. Yep, nice and clean. Perfect. Um, and the other side actually feels pretty good. This one, I think I'm just gonna do one. There, yeah, there it is. The other side feels good, so I'm not gonna touch the other side. Whenever I'm cutting through the anodizing here, right, which I just did by deburring it, and also when I drilled, when I used this as the the drill guide for the piece, you're always gonna shape off some of the anodizing on the spar. There's a few things you can do. Um, the proper FAA A and P thing is you're gonna use an alodyne pen and you're gonna alodyne the holes. Um, it is also acceptable to just put a drop of primer in the holes here. Um, next time I go and prime something, I always at the end leave just a smidge of primer in the bottom of my PPS cups and then I go around and check everything that I've worked on and just put like usually a little Q-tip and put little drops of primer and things just to coat everything. Um, I believe Vans doesn't actually even care. Uh, if you check the plans, they don't say anything about having to reprime these or recoat these. Uh, only of course, if you, you know, do something major here. And you can tell, this is interesting. So in this spar and in other anodized parts, this came from the factory this way. So at some point in the factory, in the manufacturing process, they scratched it, and you can feel it's nice and smooth, but you can see that they ran, I think this is what an alodyne pen will do to, to this coating, uh, an alodyne pen over this, um, just to cover it up. 